Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at a Tinsley 3 inch refractor from the 1940s, probably about 1947. This telescope is all original and even features uh, some extras that you never see with these kinds of scopes. This scope has an original Tinsley finder, uh, it has an original Tinsley, Tinsley star diagonal very strange because it screws on here and some other interesting Tinsley accessories. Here's how the mount works and it has the standard Tinsley friction kind of control down here on the bottom. The friction control up here here's your friction control device screwdriver. Apparently back in 1947 you were required to carry a screwdriver wherever you went because that's the way you adjust the tension here. And if you, if you have it too loose, it's liable to slip on you. So you want to have it for a little bit of friction there, just a little bit of friction. Just right about. This is uh, very similar in appearance to a 4 inch. Matter of fact, here's a picture of this scope right next to my 4 inch comparable big brother to this telescope. Here you can see the original paint. This is uh, pretty much just grime and normal oxidation I'm sure. Anyway there's the original paint color. This has uh, been slid down. It's actually pretty tough to balance right there where it was before. So I slid it back and then that exposed this which has been under there for who knows how many years. Okay, here's a better look at the finder. Kind of an interesting bottle nose configuration. This thing uh, slips in here. So that slips in and out for focus. Pretty good friction fit there. Okay, here's the star diagonal. Star diagonal screws in. It's a pretty much a permanent kind of a deal. I'm sure this is all original. Here's the poro prism. The poro prism is also a screw in. It's tricky to do this. Here are the accessories I got with the telescope. First of all, a nice original brochure. Very flimsy condition. This is uh, supposed to be from the 1940s, 1947, so, and I would be absolutely certain that wouldn't be too far off, very close. So there's the original brochure. Here's a, the Poro Prism. The Poro Prism, uh, let's see, $45 back in those days. Can you imagine what that would be today? $450 or something like that. Here is the star diagonal. This was $30 back on the, on the brochure. Uh, $300. Would you pay $300 for a star diagonal? Here's a couple of eyepieces. These guys are going for about seven bucks each. I would guess this is about a 25 millimeter, maybe a 17, 18, something like that, maybe a 10 or 12, something backwards, but uh, I'm sure these are original. They, have, they don't have any markings on them, but uh, there's every indication that those are original eyepieces. Um, they have a typical kind of a narrow field of view. Not great, but not bad. Okay, here's one of the things that uh, really helps to preserve these Tinsley's. This is a nice aluminum cap, screw-on cap. Hard for people to lose that protects the lens, protects the objective very nicely. There's the nice objective in there. Has three spacers, appears to be all original. Pretty dusty, but not bad. And it works well, it's a good, good objective. Notice that this, compared to the four inch cell, this doesn't have the ability to collimate it. So this is, so uh, what it is is what it is. That's the collimation adjustment, none. Here's another look at the mount. You can see the uh, see the nice here I have the serial number. I'll show you a close up of that. It's in beautiful condition. 
Okay, take a look at this. This is a very complicated and elaborate sort of a system for azimuth friction control. They apparently didn't feel like altitude friction control was very cru crucial, but azimuth, boy, they went whole hog here. You got a big fancy spring, several nice big hunks of brass holding everything together. There's a brass washer. That goes on first. This spring is basically sort of wrapped around that piece of brass. I don't know if it's just friction holding it, I think. I don't think it's, I don't think it's attached in any substantial way. This goes on like that. There you go. So now you have friction control. Okay, so here you can see this is the 4-inch mount and this is the 3-inch mount. And at first blush it would look like this is thicker here. Uh, it may be a little thicker this way, but uh, I believe the 4-inch is a little beefier that way. I don't know. It's hard to say. Anyway, they're clearly not quite the same casting. They have different widths. You can see that, the obvious difference there. Um, they're very similar. The base actually might be the same. The two bases, these bases might be identical, might be the very same thing. These things, by the way, those are, I added those because these, these are such a huge pain. I'll probably make some for this too. But uh, for practical use, I've got the original bolts to go in there, but this is just, those are so much more convenient than these things. These are a pain. Okay, now I think you can see the distinct difference in the colors. This is a much darker gray. Even here, where it's uh, been protected, it's still darker than this. So I'm not sure if this paint is original. It looks very original to me, but it could have been repainted, I suppose. Um, anyway, whoever did it did a very nice job because it looks just clean as can be. Um, the focus knobs are almost identical. The finders, now this is an original finder here. This one's a replica that I made trying to imitate this. The finder rings here, these are actually correct finder rings. They're exactly identical to that except for the color. Uh, so I tried to duplicate the finder as close as I could with some modern optics. Anyway, you can see the difference in length, difference in color. Certainly also notice the difference in the uh, objective cells. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this 3-inch Tinsley from 1947. Thank you for watching.